constructing a ludic and acoustic environment for the deaf, the technology as a tool in music education of the deaf. Despite the initial skepticism, the use of digital technology and interactive games for educational purposes is increasingly being integrated in the educational system. One of the most important reasons for this has been the use of these tools in the area of special education, particularly in the areas of general knowledge or main school subjects through specialized software and peripheral computer devices. What is happening though in the music education of deaf students? Can technology be used to educate the deaf in music? So far, technology has established its presence through peripheral systems, especially analog ones, such as chairs or accessories transmitting vibrations focusing only on music appreciation, but not for educational purposes. Music education, however, is particularly important since through this process someone may develop many different abilities. Especially in the case of the deaf, music should be treated in a particular way because it is a learning process directly associated with the sensory sensitivity of the body. So far, the music education of the deaf is limited to specially designed classrooms and in many cases music is being used as a therapeutic tool rather than an educational tool. The main questions of this research is first of all if music can become perceivable to an extent that it can constitute a learning process when the sense of hearing is absent. In which ways is the music education of the deaf carried out and if technology can finally be a contributor to the music education of the deaf? It's true that the contribution of technology may be particularly helpful because with it we are able to analyze in depth the structure of sound and its characteristics, to decode a musical sequence and to reconstruct all these elements into a new custom-built structure. Before continue, let's see a short historical review about the engagement of the deaf with the music. The engagement with music and music education of the deaf has been addressed by the scientific community since 1848 and specifically in America. Also, searching through the history of music, we come across several artists with profound or partial hearing loss who have managed to either compose music or play a musical instrument or even create sound installations showing no deficiency compared to artists with no hearing loss. An important example in music history is Ludwig van Beethoven, who at the age of 29 he was considered completely deaf. However, he continued composing and created one of his most important works, which is until now considered a masterpiece of music history mainly because of its innovation. In the recent history of music we meet Evelyn Glenny, a virtuoso percussionist who has been profoundly deaf since the age of 12. Although she continued studying music and performed at an international level. In both previous cases, of course, we should recognize the fact of the advanced age when the loss of hearing occurred, resulting in a certain degree of oral memory established at a younger age. As far as the modern music scene is concerned, Seinmark, profoundly deaf, born in a signing family, has now obtained an international music career. In the domain of visual arts, Christine San Kim, also profoundly deaf, uses sounds as tool to create interactive installations and express herself through this process. The aforementioned examples, combined with efforts that are being made to translate lyrics of several tracks in sign language and the performances of choirs of deaf people, lead us to the conclusion that the involvement of the deaf with sound and music is not strange or insignificant. Sound and music are a part of deaf's daily life and culture as much as hearing peoples despite of the fact that the perception of the sound itself is achieved through a different process. 
So far, the methods of teaching music to the deaf are being realized through the physical presence in specially designed music classes using the vibrations produced by percussions and transmitting them through special materials in space. In many cases, this process of teaching music turns into a therapeutic process helping the people involved to improve their communication skills and provide an aid to socialization as well. These research findings suggest that the process of music education of the deaf should be treated in a different way in order to adapt to non-verbal and acoustic communication. One could argue that music is a different language of communication like the visual language of science. Taking advantage of the research data and the conclusions reached, we propose the construction of a prototype system using low-cost virtual reality systems. The result is an experimental tool which uses, combines and adapts this technology with the ultimate goal to become a comprehensive music educational tool for the deaf. The system consists of a combination of mechanisms approaching fundamental principles in order to understand sound and musical structures through a virtual environment. These mechanisms are represented as conceptual virtual spaces divided in three categories, sound, music and music composition. In each space, the user has the opportunity to navigate and interact with the visual objects through a hand motion detector or by changing position in the virtual space. The content evolves gradually, starting from the notion of sound and leading to the structural elements of music. The introductory space evolves around sound transmission. The user can see schematically the transmission of sound in space by selecting the sound source he wants to activate via virtual touch. This visualization is based on the physics of the transmission of sound wave in a three-dimensional space that is described as a spherical sound wave. The following three virtual spaces are dedicated to structural elements of music frequency, rhythm, and timbre. In order to understand the meaning of frequency, we are using three main categories of the frequency range, low, medium, and high frequencies, as well as the theory of music instruments related to their size and their frequency response, and the theory of Newton about the colors related to the music tones. Based on that, in the virtual space, there are three similar objects of different sizes each of them representing a frequency range. While playing a sound, there is also a movement of each of these objects according to the frequencies that are produced. As for the colors, each musical note, according to Newton, has its own color. This result is coming from the relation between the wavelength of the light and the wavelength of each frequency. For example, the middle note C, 500 Hz, is represented through the color red. The rhythm is explained through selected rhythmic patterns according to music theory. Their visual representation is given through the movement of a group of objects that are activated by the user. Additively, to reach the intensity of the vision, we are using also a combination of lights that are changing their color and intensity according to the rhythm. The notion of the timbre is represented through various textures such as metal or wood. Actually, it is a walk through an everyday soundscape. These different qualities of sound can help the deaf to combine a well-known image to the sound that is given for it. The user can activate any of them via virtual touch. The last space is dedicated to free composition. In this area, the user can choose from the objects he had met before in order to create his own music composition, visually and acoustically. Every chosen object can be put in a predefined place. During this process, apart from the visual representation of the sound itself in a virtual 3D music score, there is an acoustic reproduction of the result at high volume from the speaker surrounding the user, enabling the user to feel the vibrations in the physical space. This element is an important part of the process for the user to be fully immersed in the virtual space. The system Immersions Step into the World of Sound consists of a composite immersive visual and sound vibration system. 
For its realization, the Oculus Rift DK2 was selected, combined with the leap motion for the hand movement tracking. Additionally, there is a special construction consisting of low-frequency speakers which surround the user at a certain position and at a certain distance in order to transmit the sound vibrations properly. These technology systems were chosen because of their accuracy and low cost. It is an affordable solution which can easily be used by music institutions, schools, cultural places or even at home. Also, these virtual reality systems enable the user to navigate and interact in the virtual space in the same way as in the real world. The Oculus Rift DK2 is able to transfer and adjust the user's movements from the real to the virtual world since it is integrated with the position tracking system. The leap motion detects the movement of the hands and allows the user to use his hands so that he is able to touch or move virtual objects. Overall, the system enhances the immersion and is free of other peripheral navigation systems which might distract the user's attention and eventually force him to be a priori educated in how to use the system itself. Finally, the system enables the recording of data related to the user's interaction time span in its virtual space, aiming to further develop and upgrade system itself. This work describes the development of a tool dedicated to the music education of profoundly deaf people. At this moment, due to the limited number of results, it is difficult to evaluate its effectiveness. Nevertheless, the proposed system is a flexible tool because of the adaptability of the content to its operation and usage. This system could be developed in a wider experimental procedure in collaboration with scientific teams from the field of special education and psychology in order to be able to become a comprehensive educational tool dedicated to the music education of the deaf. For further information, you can contact us at the email addresses above. Thank you for paying attention.